Coming up today on Keys to Kingdom Living. Things began to take place rapidly in this nation. Things speeded up so quickly. It was like a blur. I literally sensed one day in the first week of this month, I sensed a spiritual vacuum taking place one day. It was as if you could feel evil spreading across this nation. God says, I've given you a year of decision and your choice has come up before me and now I am giving you the desires of your heart. And what happened? There was a shift in this nation. This is not the wrath of God. This is not the wrath of God. This is God giving man what they wanted. Let me explain. Welcome to Keys to Kingdom Living. I'm your host, Pastor Asa Dockery, coming to you from Moore Harvest Church North. Today we're bringing you the powerful conclusion of the message we began last week. It is entitled, A Shift Has Transpired. There is so much in this word, I won't take up any more time. Get out the word of God, go with me, and let's hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. God gives people an opportunity, and with that opportunity, he gives a tr time frame in which to change their ways, and then he goes on with his plan with or without them. You have a time frame. Today is the day of salvation. While it is called day, call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. There are three stories in Genesis and in Exodus where God brought destruction upon the sin of the people, uh, of people but chose to deliver some from the destruction. The stories are Noah, we're just reading about, Lot with Sodom and Gomorrah, and the Israelites in Egypt. These three instances show us scripturally how God grants favor to the humble, but then opposes the proud. In other words, here it comes. This is the foundation that God has told me to lay so that you can get what he's about to drop on you here in a minute. God makes a distinct, distinction between those who are righteous in his sight and those who are not, and he preserves the righteous. Are you righteous? Are you righteous? Because you're righteous, God will preserve you. He will preserve you. That's why no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. Guess what? We go through sickness. It went through this body like a virus. Because that's what it was. But guess what? We're still here. We've not lost one person to the virus. Why? Because God preserves the righteous. God dealt with the people in, in Noah's day, but they went on with their lives as if, listen, God dealt with the people in Noah's day but they went on with their lives as if God's words and God's warnings had no bearing on them at all through Noah. The same happened in Lot's time. Lot was vexed, Jude said, sorely vexed by the ways that the men were there in Sodom and Gomorrah. And you know what? This is also happening in our day. People are living their life like nothing's happening, nothing's going wrong, and they're ignoring the voice of the body of Christ and the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Turn with me to 1 Samuel 8. I've got to pick up some steam here. 1 Samuel 8, verse 4. Then all the elders, all the elders, every last one of the elders. I want you to see that. That's in Scripture, y'all. Every one of the leaders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Look, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Heed the voice of the people and all they say to you. 
That sentence right there is taking place right now. Right now in America. That sentence is taking place right now. And the Lord said to Samuel, Heed the voice of who? The people in all they say to you. For they have not rejected you, Samuel, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even to this day with which they have forsaken me and served other gods, so they are doing to you also. When I read that for the hundredth time, that just leapt off the page at me. He says, so they are going to do to you also. Samuel had prophesied, Samuel had warned, Samuel worked with the, the people of Israel, the elders of Israel, and they got to a point, they said, you know what, that's it, we're done with God, and we're done with you. It wasn't Samuel's fault. The people said, we're done listening to you, verse 9. Now therefore heed their voice, however you shall solemnly warn them, that's why God sent me here today, you shall solemnly warn them, forewarn them, and show them the behavior of the king who will reign over them when they dismiss me. A shift had taken place overnight among the Jews, and they chose to reject God as their king and Samuel as their prophet and requested that God give them a man to reign over them. In essence, the Jews in the story showed contempt and repudiated God. When someone or something is repu repudiated, it means the people have chosen to refuse to accept or be associated with someone or something. They repudiated God, says, no, nope, we don't want to have you as king. We've rejected you. It means also, repudiate, means to deny the truth are the validity thereof. There is so much I can say right here, but I gotta stay to the script. What is so sad about this story, other than their rejection of God, which is bad enough, is that God granted them the request. God knew it would make it hard on them. God knew what the king would do to him, the, his own special people. God knew that the man would become between him and his people. And yet, because the will of the people prevailed over the word of God, God says, give it to them. And he gave them over. Here it is. I'm giving you scripture. He gave them over to their evil desires to reap the consequences of their choices that day. Throughout Israel's history, as well as human history, there have been instances where God has had to give entire generations over to their own evil hearts and lust to suffer for the error of their ways because they rejected God as their king. There are those in our day who believe in Jesus, hear what I'm saying today, there are those who believe in Jesus, but they are saying with their decisions they want a man to rule over them, and God is once again granting them their request. Romans chapter 1, I'm giving you Scripture. Verse 20. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things which are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because although they knew God, although they knew him, they did not glorify him as God, so they rejected him in their hearts, not and were not uh, thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts became darkened, and we're seeing that, professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up, say, give them up. God gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God, exchanged the truth of God, rejected the truth, repudiated the truth for the lie, 
and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. For this reason, God gave them what? God gave them up yet again to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of the error which was due See, you see that? God gave them up. God gave them up. Now they're receiving the, er the penalty of the error of their ways that was due to them. If you sow to the flesh, you will of the flesh reap corruption. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, after all that God had done for them in this uh, account in Romans, God gave them over. He gave them up. He gave them up. And then finally he gave them over to a reprobate or a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. And you think, my God, how can people be so perverse? It is because God says, I've worked with them. I've, I've, I've had long suffering with them and they would not hear me. They kept pardoning me. So I give them up and I gave them up and now I have given them over and now they are doing things that are inconceivable that people would actually want to do it. And now they're doing it publicly. I am giving you scriptural proof to back up what I am preaching today. This is not my opinion. It's straight out of God's Word. As Paul meticulously shows us in Scripture what happens when people who know God, they know God, God Christ, uh, America has been a Christian nation over 200 years. We know God. But Paul shows us in Scripture what happens when people who know God, but because they're not willing to love Him more than this world, God gives them up incrementally to their vile passions uh, until finally He gives them over to a debase or reprobate mind, and this will cause them to believe a lie. Isn't it funny? That's not funny. And it's something how while all this perversion is going on, you can't hardly get the truth out on social media now. Because they have rejected the truth and they have chosen to believe a lie. Let me ask you this question. How many has sensed a spiritual shift in America since January the 1st? Raise your hand. The majority of the people here have sensed in their spirit, not based on what you have seen, not based on what you have heard, is something you have sensed in your spirit. Raise your hand again. That is not an accident. That is a confirmation because I have not talked to any of you. Do any of y'all know what I'm preaching today? You may remember... Back in 2020, way back. <laughs> How many times from this pulpit the Lord directed me to tell you that 2020 was a year of decision and it had nothing to do with election. How many remember that? It's on, it's video, it's recorded, it's gone on television, it's documented is what I'm saying. When I began to preach on January the 3rd, I did not realize that something had transpired in the spirit over America, and it caught me off guard. The enemy struck this body during that particular service while I was preaching on dispossessing our enemies. You remember that? When the enemy struck, it essentially stopped this service in its tracks. I knew something was happening, but I did not know all that was going on. For three weeks now, I have been asking the Lord for clarity into the things that had occurred that Sunday and since, as well as what has been transpiring in this nation since January the 1st. The Lord spoke to me Friday morning. I was not asking Him from a word from uh, about America. I was just being in God's presence, and God spoke to me on Friday morning, and He gave me this insight that I'm about to share with you. Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2. I'm giving you scripture to back it up. Is this helping you today? God's, he's not forsaken us. He's not abandoned us. He's given us direction. He's given us specificity about what's going on. Clear detail. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1.
You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things you have heard from me among many witnesses. Witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardness, King James says. New King James says hardship. You therefore must endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus. Timothy was coming up in his ministry. And he was preaching the word of God. And people were rejecting him because of his youth, but probably more importantly because of the truth coming out of him. And Paul was exhorting him as a mentor to Timothy. He says, Timothy, don't let their hardness cause you to become hard. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So that's what's God's telling us right now, stop seeing yourself just as a Christian. You're a soldier now because we're in a spiritual war. No one engaged in warfare. Do you see the terminology Paul is using here with this young evangelist? No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please, please him, God, who enlisted him as a soldier. That's what it says. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. I'll leave that right there. You got to play by the rules. Hardness here means to undergo hardship, to endure afflictions, to suffer trouble. There was a spiritual shift that took place in America on January the 1st that caught most of the body of Christ, including myself, off guard. Even though the Lord told me last year that 2020 was the year of decision. On January 1, God granted people the desires of their heart and this created a spiritual shift over the atmosphere of America. And since January the 1st, Things have exponentially shot off the charts. Evil. Things began to take place rapidly in this nation. Things speeded up so quickly. It was like a blur. I literally sensed one day in the first week of this month, I sensed a spiritual vacuum taking place one day. And it was as if you could feel evil spreading across this nation. God says, I've given you a year of decision, and your choice has come up before me, and now I am giving you the desires of your heart. And what happened? There was a shift in this nation. This is not the wrath of God. This is not the wrath of God. This is God giving man what they wanted. Let me explain. I have heard people use the story of God telling Abraham that he would not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah if there were ten righteous people there. How many has heard somebody say something about that story here in 2021? Look at this, y'all. People are using that. Well, there, there was, if there had been ten in, in Sodom and Mark, Gomorrah, God would not have destroyed it. And so, you know, God's good with America. This was used... God won't destroy America. People have used that scripture in reference to the outcome of the 2020 election. Even though God has granted people their desires and have given them what they wanted, let me remind you what the Lord has given me for you throughout this message. We are not of this world. We're in it, but we're not of it. Therefore, we must, soldiers, endure hardness, like good soldiers, that is coming upon the children of disobedience. Tell them solemnly, warn them. God told Samuel, the people, this will be the behavior of your king. And it's coming upon the children of disobedience. Don't get up under, Christian soldier, what's coming upon those that are in the world.
Don't do it. That means you got to shut it out. Or you'll come up under the weight of that. And you cannot do that because God didn't give you grace to take on fear. Therefore, we must endure hardness like good soldiers. That is con that, uh, the, the stuff that is coming up on the turn of his, uh, disobedience. We are not to become entangled in the affairs of this world. Paul wrote, it's in Scripture. I gave it to you. God told me to preach it. Don't get entangled in the affairs of this world. You're not of it. Don't get engaged in it. Shut it out. People are predicting things right now out of worry and concern that are not of God about this nation. It's unreal. Be careful who you listen to this year. Try the spirits and see if they're of God or if they're fear. Because if you're not careful, when you hear somebody condemning America to destruction because of the change that has gone on spiritually in America, and they do it out of fear, you'll come up and receive that spirit of fear into your life, and you will lose your strength and ability to have faith in God and have confidence, and you will become weak because you have believed a lie that was conceived out of the heart of a person in fear. Guard your heart with all diligence. Is this sound doctrine? Yes. Second Samuel, I'm done. Chapter 12. But God, who is rich in mercy, wherewith he loved us, his great love, he saved us. But God. David has sinned. Nathan, the prophet of God, David's son, comes to him and tells him, what's going on behind closed doors verse 7 then Nathan said to David you are the man thus says the Lord of Israel I anointed you king over Israel and I delivered you from the hand of Saul I gave you this is God talking to David through Nathan I gave you God said your master's houses our house your master's wives and your keeping and gave you the house of Israel and Judah they both had peace together under David's reign. And if that had been too little, that had not been enough. I would have given you so much more. Why have you despised the commandments of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me. And have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Hear what the Lord told David. He would have given David so much more if he would have only asked for it. But instead, David chose to harden his heart against God's commandments and sin. For four years, our economy just exploded gangbusters it, the stock market hitting record highs 31,000 points regulations were coming off businesses that were going to other countries were coming back and getting established and, and, and there was liberty in churches to worship without fear and there was so much that was just transpiring in those four years and it's like God says the people I'm moving. There's, there, there are those that are wanting to move, and then there are those that says, this is not enough. We will not have your truth in this nation. And they harden their heart, and they sinned against God. And God says, if all that I had done for you had been too little, I would have done so much for you, but because you harden your heart and com and against my commandments and sinned in my sight, instead of the blessings, I'm going to give you a sword. Judgment. David's rebellion and sin caused hardness. Do you see that? Could have been blessing, but hardness came upon him and his family. God desired to bless this nation.
and to do even greater things for this nation. But the children of disobedience hardened their hearts to his goodness, and now they must endure the penalty of the error of their ways. For those who have been faithful to God, hear what the Spirit has told me to tell you, and sold out to his lordship and to his will, we must be about our Father's business and know that God has set a distinction between us and those that are of the world. We are separated from them just like Israel was in Goshen. And what went on in Egypt did not go on in Goshen. What goes on in the world does not go on in the body of Christ, in the kingdom of God. We are the head above and not below. We are the, the first and not the last. God has set us this way. Did he not tell us that? And we've got to keep doing what God has told us to do. And we've got to do it with more passion and more love and more fire than we've ever done it before because now is the time for us to shine like the noon day sun because people are going to be healed with hardness and they're going to need the body of Christ to help them get through this hardness. The storm is brewing, but our focus has to be set on Jesus throughout this year as never before. Keep your hands to the plow and don't look back. Because Peter, walking on the water to Jesus, looked at the storm and nearly drowned. There's nothing there. Don't look back. We're almost out of time, but before I leave you today, I want to ask, if you were not able to catch the first part of this message, I had laid a foundation that will bring more understanding to the final segment of this message. Uh, if you'd like to hear it in its entirety, contact our church office. Be sure and let the operator know the name of the message it is. A shift has transpired. We'll get it out to you as quickly as possible. Also, if uh, you have any prayer requests or praise reports, we'd love to agree with you in prayer. Many of you have been calling, and we are standing in prayer and agreement for your miracle, for your deliverance, whatever the need is. God is greater than that, and our faith moves God's heart and God's hand. We want to help you connect with the anointing of God and see the Lord move in your situation. There's many needs contact us and let us know how we can stand with you in prayer. And then finally, if you've been watching Keys to Kingdom Living for a while, you'd love to be a financial partner of this ministry. We would love to have your help so that we're able to do more of what God has called us to do, and that's to touch hearts and change lives through the Word of God. Go to our website, whcnorth.org. There you can give safely and securely in every bit of the proceeds go right back in the television ministry so that we can do what God's called us to do. As I get ready to leave you today, I want to encourage you. God is bigger than the storm. Let's keep our eyes on him and let God take care of our storm. God bless you.